get going. Isaiah chapter 37. Isaiah chapter 37. Haggai, the 37th book of the Bible. And it came to pass, this picks up from chapter 36, Hezekiah heard it. The report from his, from, uh, his householder, the scribe, and the recorder. The words of Rabshika. Then he rent his clothes. I mean, just, we're, we're in distress. We're in agony. We're in trouble. This whole invading army that has conquered all these nations. Now he's coming to Jerusalem. He's already taken care of some of the cities of Judah. Covered him with sackcloth. And it's just mourning, just agony. Seeking God. And went into the house of the Lord. Now, if you got a video, you can see how we got this great new thing here where you can read on the video the facts. It says he went to the house of the Lord. In the Bible, Lord's house is found in the Old Testament 23 times, verses. In the New Testament, Lord's house, zip. God's house. Old Testament, one verse. New Testament, zip. House of the Lord. The Old Testament, 213 verses. New Testament, zero verses. They're all King James 1611 AV Bible verses. So when you go to church, isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? Welcome to the Lord's house, God's house, house of the Lord. What's the church trying to do? Is it trying to put us back under the Old Testament? Some churches run over to Malachi, an Old Testament book, and, you know, tithes and storehouse. That's under the law. You got to be careful. Paul wrote a whole epistle to a church that was being tried to put under the law. We're not under law. We're not under the Old Testament. We're on this side of Calvary. Some will try to put you in the Old Testament. You know, the people in the Old Testament were Christians. you got to be careful. So, verse 2, and he said to Elkayim, who was over his house, we saw that in chapter 36, Shibna the scribe, he's in charge of the, the books of the Bible, he's in charge of the word of the Lord, and he's in, in charge also of <clears throat> Shibna the scribe, and the elders and priests covered the sackcloth, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. He's in charge of the recorder, too, which is uh, chapter 36, verse 22. This is all written down. What we're reading in chapter 36 and what we're re reading in chapter 37 is written by uh, Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, and I did what we call notarize by the scribe. And where's it? Shedna. This is all official. And notice here's Isaiah, the, the, the prophet of the book. This is Isaiah's time under Hezekiah, a good king of Judah. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble. There's a greater day of trouble coming. Like seven years, Jacob's trouble. And a rebuke. And a blasphemy. The children are come to birth. And there is not strength to bring forth death. That was Rachel. She died in childbearing. A Benjamin. It may be the Lord thy God will hear the words of Rapshika. And that was all chapter 36. Whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God. Now, everything that she was said against God, <coughs> excuse me, there's the word reproach. He ragged on God. He insulted God. He put God as any other small G-O-D-S. And will reprove the words which the Lord thy God has heard. 
So uh, what Hezekiah is saying, listen, all right, I read the, the statement. God heard Rav Shika. But we're bringing it before the Lord. You know, the Bible says, and God, Jesus, God already knows our needs. But he still wants us to tell him, to ask him. Therefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is left. <laughs> I mean, Judah is just in turmoil with sin. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. <laughs> Go tell Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord. So Hezekiah sends ambassadors to Isaiah. And he sends them covered in sackcloth. We're in mourning, we're in trouble. Now Isaiah comes back, and this is what he sends the messengers back to. There's messengers coming and going. You better have faithful men. And Solomon wrote in Proverbs, you know, he that sends a fool, you don't want to send a fool. You don't want to send somebody you can't rely on. This is important information going back and forth. What if there were Bible correctors in chapter 36? Well, I don't really think Shabika said that. I think he was better rendering. I think in original Hebrew he would have said, that would have been to great error Hezekiah and Isaiah and the children of Judah. They needed exactly what needed to be said. Thus saith the Lord, be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard. Wherefore, the servants of the king of Assyria had blasted me. God heard it. God heard everything the Rav Shika said. And God said, he blasted me. me. Rav Shika's in trouble. Imagine the almighty, holy God. Let's say I said about somebody, whoever. Well, you know, I think that guy lied about me. You know, it may be so. It may be true. But imagine God saying, that guy over there, he blessed me, me. Is God a liar? Well, God never says that about me. I hope I never do that for God to say about me. Behold, I will, God will, send a blast upon him. I and he shall hear a rumor. Now notice the rumor is not of God. God says, I'm going to send him. He will hear a rumor. And return to his own land. And will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Don't worry about Hezekiah. He ain't coming. He's going back home and he's going to die. I'm God. I got in control. And he's saying this to a proper king who's trying to do right in the nation. God would never have said this to any Israel north. They never did right. There's one point with Jehoshaphat, the King Ahab, he goes, you know, except for Jehoshaphat been here, I wouldn't even be talking to you. You realize people are being blessed still today because they're praying Christians? I know there are a few. But imagine the day when the Christians go into rapture. When our prayers are stalled and gone and gone to glory. Man. Think about a, a seven year period where God's people love them, trying to do right and trying to pray the best we can pray. And we're home in glory. We're not here praying. The Holy Spirit's going. That means he's not praying. So Rapshika returned. Oh, go here we go. Oh, boy. And found the king of Assyria warring against Libna. That's, I heard the rumor. There it is. For he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. Uh, there's that rumor. And he heard, 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 
Verse 7, he shall hear. And he heard concerning Tarhika, king of Ethiopia. He is come forth to make war with thee. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah saying, All right, he has not given up on Judah. I'm going over here to battle. I hear a battle over here. I hear a battle over here. But wait a minute. Let me take a moment here, Hezekiah. I'm still going to get you. I'm still thinking about you. Thus shall he speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God. Now remember, God already said you're blaspheming me. That Shekha is just throwing another log into the fire of hell. There are different degrees of hell, and Rav Shika, he's sinking himself. Whom thou trustest, and Hezekiah trusts in God. Deceived thee. Imagine, imagine someone telling you God deceives you. And yet there are unsaved people all over the world that says it. Past, present, and still to come. We had a guy Saturday, you know, there is no God, and you know, he just, you know, he lied and all that. It's nothing new. Saying, all right, this will be the deception, according to Rabshika, an enemy of God. Jerusalem shall not be given to the hand of the king of Syria. It's not. Because <laughs> we know the Bible, Rabshika and Hezekiah, right now, they don't know nothing. But, you know, you know, a lot of Christians don't know nothing either because they'd never read their Bible, especially the Old Testament. Mm. <laughs> that hurt. Behold, thou hast heard what the king of Syria has done to the lands by destroying them utterly. Yes, he has. Yes. And shalt thou be delivered? Yes. <laughs> Yes and yes statement. Rav Shika is putting his arm of strength in his military, not God. I've conquered all these gods, but your God, Hezekiah, we can do it. We got this. We're number one. Like I said this morning, we're the champions. You know the guy who thought he was a champion? Goliath, the enemy of God, you know what happened to him? He ended up dead with a rock in his head and then David carrying his head around. Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? No. As Golzin, Haran, Rezpev, and the children of Eden, were they in Telsar? No. Where is the king of Hamath? Probably dead. The king of Arthur, probably dead. And the king of the city of Sephavia, probably dead. Hena and Ava, probably dead, conquered. Because their gods are nothing. They, the Psalm says they have no they have eyes they can't see, they have ears they can't hear, they have mouths they can't talk, they have arms they can't move, they have fingers they can't finger, and they have toes they can't walk. Hezekiah received a letter. Now look at verse 10. Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah. Verse 14. Hezekiah received a letter. Somebody put it in writing. It's going to the king. We better make sure we got it documented and true. Um, like I said, we said in verse th chapter 36, 22, when we close the chapter, it's written down with the scribe and the recorder. It may be the same consequence here in chapter 37. But now it's a letter. Rapshika said, say. You see the inspiration now, the Bible? God's voice? All right, write it down. There's an inspiration of the Bible right there. 
Somebody verbally said something, and somebody put it in writing. From the hand of the messengers. Now, is that the Ju Judean messengers, or is that the Assyrian messengers? Is it and Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord. Look at look what Hezekiah keeps doing. He keeps going to the house of the Lord. Every time he's got trouble, he goes to the Lord. We don't have a house of the Lord in the church age. We don't have a temple. And as far as the early church, the book of Acts says <clears throat> they met house to house. Yeah, Christian houses. And I wouldn't dare they would invite all our welcome in their houses because they were being persecuted. Matter of fact, you know, there's one point in chapter 9 of the book of Acts, they tried to bring a visitor into church, and they were all scared and frightened when somebody brought Saul to church. Look, I brought Saul to church! Ah! 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 I forget who the Bible says. At the, uh, he's, he's saved now. You know, as far as I read the Bible, I don't see any lost man going to a church assembly. House of the Lord and spread it before the not, like God like God doesn't know. He says, I've heard the word. You know what Hezekiah says? What I read with my eyes, Lord, I want you to read it. Because guess what, Lord? I may get it wrong. I may lie. I may. I may falter what is really being said. Lord, here it is in writing. I can't get it wrong. Now, that's a humble man before a holy and righteous God. He says, Lord, there it is in writing. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, All right, this is what he says. O Lord of hosts, angels, seraphim, stars, everything. God of Israel. I right? sure ain't the Syrian God. It's sure not the God of Rezin, of Eden, of Aphrod, of Avon, of Hazen. Sure ain't that God. They're dead and gone. So are their people. It's not Dagon that dwells between the cherubims. Now, where is he? He's at the temple of the house. What is in front of him? The veil. Well, actually, probably the, the brazen altar, the, the, the laver, and then there's a veil that goes in the holy place, the table, the candlestick, and the altar of incense. And before that, it, there's a veil, and then there's a mercy seat with two seraphim looking down. Now, Hezekiah's not allowed that far. He said, hey, God, I am going all the way to the mercy seat. Also in heaven, the book of Revelation says there's God on his throne and there's four beasts, the cherubims. Holy, holy, holy. 24 elders. So he's going to the God that's that, that dwells in the temple, never a church building in the church age. God does not dwell in your place. And the God of heaven. And there's only one God in heaven, the God of Israel. Not the God of, of Ish, uh, Ishmael. Thou art the God. The God. Verse 12. Have the gods of the nation. As the guy says, the God. Even thou alone. Just make sure there's nobody else but you. And all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Creator. Creation. Not evolution. You come to God as the creator. Don't come to God. I mean, all right, just say this prayer with me. Does that guy believe in God that you're getting to say a prayer for salvation? Does he believe in evolution? You know, I dealt with my dad long before he died. I deal with his soul, and then later on, you know, he believed, he actually believed in evolution. Well, it would have been no good for it to say a prayer. Hebrews 11 says you've got to believe who God is. 
And if you don't believe God is a creator in the creation, that's not who God is. <clears throat> Incline thy ear. Now, it's not, uh, Hezekiah is not saying that God is off listening to anything. He's like, God, this is important. I got something important. And you've got the same attitude to God when you come to God with our serious prayer. God, listen. We are not, we are now denouncing. We are not lowering God. It's we have a petition. God, can you hear me? O oh Lord, and here, open thy eyes. Not like God ever closes his eyes. And if he did close his eyes, well, the gods of the mankind that are made by man, they have eyes that can't open or close. So if God did close his eyes, well, that's one step above a statue. Wood, hay, plastic, whatever it is. Because my God is able to open and close his eyes if he closes his eyes. O Lord, and see and hear the words of Sennacherib. I thought it was Rabshika. What's the problem? Verse 8, Rabshika returned. And he said, speak unto Hezekiah, verse 10. And Hezekiah says the words of Sennacherib. Let me tell you something. In whatever government, whether you got a president of the United States, you got a queen of England or a prime minister. When they send somebody in their office, their ambassador. Whether it be for the office of, of the ruler of that nation or for the people of that nation. When that person goes over wherever he's supposed to go and that man speaks. That man is speaking for the office that he holds. Now, let's say this just give a quite entrance here. Um, let's say President Biden sends. Uh, well, his name sends a Fred to Poland. And he says, Fred, I want you to go to Poland. I want you to tell the Polish people this, what I have to say. And let's say that ambassador goes over Poland and he just starts kicking Polish jokes and, and just a mockery. Fred is in the words of the President Biden. Because it's up to the President Biden to send somebody responsible enough for the ambassador to go wherever they go, whether it be Poland or wherever. So in other words, what we're saying, what I'm trying to say is that any ruler that sends anybody, and Solomon writes this in the book of Proverbs, you better be careful who you send. That man is your mouth. As a nation ruler. Now, on the other hand, <clears throat> people get up and say, Thus saith the word, thus saith the Bible. You are speaking as an ambassador of God. And there's some place in the Bible God says, They say, Thus saith the Lord. I didn't say anything. Woe be to you. God didn't send you. You're not the ambassador. Now, God said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. You go as an ambassador of God. You go as a child of God. Get into church. We're having a movie. We got a great church. We got a wonderful people. We got a great pastor. We have movie night. We actually have bowling night. Come and join us. That's not the gospel that Jesus Christ told you. You are an improper ambassador. You are not speaking the words of Jesus. Now, I don't know how far Rav Shika strayed away from uh, Sennacherib. But I'm looking at the, I'm spiritualizing as a Christian. Now, you go out there as a, as a, as a Christian. 
And where to preach the gospel, the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture, was buried and rose again the third day according to Scripture, that the Bible said to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes him should not perish. I am an ambassador of God the Father in Jesus Christ. You better be careful when you try to quote scripture and you may get it wrong. You are an ambassador. If you have failed in quoting the scripture completely and rightly, you're going to have to get an account. Jesus said in Matthew 12, every idle word that man shall speak, he shall give an account. An idle word is, all right, let's say the scripture and you misquoted it. You better not say, let's say the scriptures if you're going, if you don't know the scripture, say, as far as my recollection, but I'm not quoting verbatim, but this is what the Bible says. There are people all over the world, past, present, and future, who will get up and thus say of the Lord, and God, I didn't say it. <clears throat> They'll get up and say, thus say, that's not what I, that's not, that's not, no. And then there are the faithful that get up and say, thus say the Lord, that's what the Bible says. And they're faithful ambassadors. Even, even we, we are called ambassadors in the New Testament. So whatever Rapshika is saying, he is saying from the mouth of Sennacherib, even though Sennacherib is not there. And if Sennacherib can't find a faithful man to speak correctly, Sennacherib better go on himself. The angels can't witness because they have no idea what salvation, the gospel, and to be redeemed is. That's why angels can't witness. That's why the angel in uh, Acts chapter 10 says, you got to go get the man Peter. I can't tell you. I don't know what redemption is. I don't know what Jesus, I knew what, I was there. I saw Jesus Christ suffer and die, but I had no idea what that means. which has sent to reproach the living God. So all the heresy, all taunting God, that's called a reproach. So when I get up and blast against the Catholics and the Mormons and the Jehovah Witness and the atheists, I'm reproaching religion correctly and rightly. And when they mock you, and they sass you, and they hate you. They're not mocking you. They're mocking Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ takes it offense. The living God. You know what the other gods are? They're dead gods. <laughs> of truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations. Their That's a true statement. And have cast their gods into the fire. They were no gods. True. The work of man's hands. <coughs> Handmade. Handcrafted. Manmade. Wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Those gods and those. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, our God, save us. That's what Jews be crying in the tribulation period. From his hand, Sennacherib, and all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. So all the nations are going to be to the point, all right? Did you hear Rap Shika? Yeah, he was blasting all those nations and those gods, you know, they, they, those nations, there's no more than that. And he's over there, he's against Judah, and he's calling on that God of Judah. He's making fun of that God of Judah. Did you hear what I heard? No, I heard the God of Judah beat his butt. The God of Judah did not do what the other gods Quite interesting. <laughs> 